Today is the best day ever. There it is. Okay. Well, I'm excited to be back in Chicago. Last time we were in this room, we had about 120 people. And uh, we did, I knew we were going to have a big packed house in here tonight. So I appreciate the time that you've spent to come out here. I appreciate the work by Laura Black to allow this event to occur. Also, our incredible kitchen staff who put together that fantastic meal and dessert for us. Let's give them a round of applause real quickly. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we just traveled. I mean, it's been nonstop. Every year at the end of the year around November, I just like I'm just catching my breath around Halloween, just going, well, you know, I don't know if I can do that again. And then the, then the next year rolls around, and it's even more than the year before. And so instead of trying to get out of it, now it's just like, hey, how can we add more on and go further, faster, reach more people, have a better time, and enjoy the process? And that's, that's brought up some interesting ideas, and that's how we ended up at getting the bus. So we took our whole bus on tour with the whole crew and the band on this last tour, the Healing Waters Band. So we did that, and we went all the way across the nation, then came back, had a great time in Fossil Rim. We just came from Fossil Rim, outside of Dallas, really closer to Waco. This is a, an African animal sanctuary. And it's run by a woman who's a, a fantastic, Christina, she's a fantastic friend, and a raw foodist. And they have 3,000 acres of giraffes, zebras, gazelles, um, water buck, I mean, all kinds, white rhinos, black rhinos, exotic animals. And she took us in behind the scenes. So we got to pet baby rhinos. And the sound that they make when they're like, like squawking for their mom, it's unbelievable. Like the cutest things ever. And we've just been blessed. You know, we kind of show up here, and Robin over here is doing these events in the next couple of days. He gives me a gift, this fantastic gift here. And then my friend Darlene in the back and her partner give, give me a durian. And it's just like we're just getting, I mean, it's not unbelievable. It's really unbelievable. And we've just been really blessed. And I think part of it is the karma that comes back from working really, really hard. Working really hard. I really do believe that there's, there's an old story. It's a, it's a, it's a story about a Chinese emperor, and it's a, it comes from way back about 3,000 years ago. And the emperor of China, he commissioned his top people, his top scribes, um, his princesses, his noble people, priestesses, to go out amongst the kingdom and to discern and distill the wisdom of the ancients. And after about six months, they came back with 13 tomes, gigantic volumes of text each one, 1,500 pages, real small little writing. You know how Chinese writing is. And the emperor took a little one look at this. He's like, you've got to be kidding. This is unbelievable. Nobody reads in this kingdom. Are you kidding? Nobody's going to be able to use this. And he threw it back at him. He said, make it simpler than that. So they condensed down all those tomes, 13, down into one. And they brought that into the emperor. And the emperor took a look at that and he said, come on. This is, this is absurd. I mean, you give this to the average person on the streets right here in the capital, they're not going to be able to discern what this is. It's got to be simpler than that. So he threw it back at him. Well, they were getting a little bit perturbed, and it's the emperor. So they thought, well, okay, it's the emperor. They went back out, and they condensed all that down into one chapter. And they came back to the emperor with this one chapter, and they handed it to the emperor. The emperor took one look at it, and he says, it's got to be simpler than this, and he threw it back at him. Well, they were freaking out, as you can imagine. I mean... They had 1,500 pages, 13 tomes. Then they had condensed that down into one tome and then down into one chapter. And here's the emperor throwing it back at him. But it was the emperor. There's not really much you can do with the emperor. So they went back out and condensed that down into one page. You ever had that experience like a cheat sheet in school where you're like you're flipping it upside down. There's writing in the corners and around. You're like going like this. So they, then they give that to the emperor. And the emperor says, is this some kind of a joke? This is about the wisdom of the ancients. It's got to be simpler than this. And he crumbled it up and threw it at him. Well, some of the noble people were just having a fit. I mean, they, they, they were really upset. And their judgment getting the better part of their valor, they decided, hey, let's just relax and let's see if we can come up with something. So a couple days later, they came back in and they had just one piece of paper with one sentence on it. All the wisdom of the ancients, the wisdom of the ages. 
And they came back to the emperor and handed that to him. The emperor took the piece of paper and read the sentence. Now, I remember when I first heard this, it was very anticlimactic until I thought about it for a while. And the more I thought about it, the more powerful it became. The, the sentence read, there's no such thing as a free lunch. There's no such thing as a free lunch. The wisdom of the ancients. So take a good listen to that. Fascinatingly enough, I really believe in hard work. If you want a result, you have to plant the seeds, you have to protect your crops, and then you have to reap at the end of that result, at the end of that time. Recently was reading a book on Michigan State Lottery winners. It's a book I read years ago, and I finally found it again. It's a really hard book to find. It's called Money for Nothing. And it's the stories of everyone who won the million-dollar Michigan lottery since 1972, 20 years of stories. Fascinating. Interestingly enough, guess what? I just opened it up the other night to reread it, and the first sentence, guess what the first sentence was? There's no such thing as a free lunch. Isn't that amazing? And the stories were quite remarkable. Families getting broken up, gambling addictions, neighbor turning against neighbor, husband turning against wife, people having to move out of the state, people parking in front of their house at all hours, coming and knocking on the door at all hours, asking for money. I mean, every, in every single case, it was a disaster because there's really no such thing as a free lunch. But we always, you know, we always still play the lottery anyway, just hoping and that really, you know, Gandhi said it this way. He said, there's, unearned money is one of the world's greatest evils. Unearned money is one of the world's greatest evils. And what, how this relates here is that in the food realm, it's discipline. Discipline weighs ounces, regret weighs tons, is what Jim Rohn says. And there are different styles about how we can approach our diet. And most of the style that we've been presented is, is in martial arts, they call it the hard style. Martial arts, we have the hard style and the soft style. And recently, I was hanging out with uh, my friend Eric the Lion in New Orleans. And we hung out with him for a couple days. He's the seven-time world champion in karate. I mean, he is the world record holder. I mean, he, nobody can break more boards than him. No one is stronger than him. No one's tougher than him. This guy's unbelievable. I mean, when he, we're in a room with him, and he, like, goes, you know, I said, do something for us. And he'll just step back, and immediately, you're clearing out of the room. I mean, he's so powerful that he could break this right here, this, this post right He could break that easily. It's amazing to see the guy. Now he's on raw food, of course, by the way. Yeah, he's making a comeback. He was seven-time world champion. Now he's making a comeback. At any rate, he is the master of the hard style. He is a living master. I mean, the guy's in he, he, he has an aura about him. And he, he, when he was the, with the world champion, he would look around the world to see if anybody could compete with him, and he would go and fight them. Now, don't we have enough of that in this world today? Right? It's like, you know, just, it's like you have that on the freeways. We'd have enough of it. You turn on the TV, that's what you get. So instead of the diet plan, which is like, you know, you can have this, don't have that, have this, don't have that, eat this, don't eat that which is what we're kind of taught as, you know, we're now we're on a diet. Oh, I can't have that. No, I can't have that. But I can eat this, but I better not have that. That's the way we're taught diet, right? It's like this hard style. Like we have to willpower. No, I'm going to resist and all that kind of thing. That there's another way. And another way is, is the technology of having another way is just that's important. Just even have the technology or strategy that's different. And the other strategy and how it relates is that it's a soft style which is the archetype of the Chinese oriental master who just redirects the energy, never even doesn't, have, doesn't even have to use any bit of their own energy. And we've all seen that archetype before. Somebody comes running at that person, they just spin them right into the wall. They don't even have to use any energy at all. Have you ever seen that before? And if you've ever seen one of these people, one of these kind of masters, you know, the guy who's like 90 and nobody can touch them, that is a sight to see. And that is very, that, that's beyond even my friend Eric. You know, because that is even more grace and more skills required to do that. Now, how does that happen? Well, it's not about battling through discipline and ego and I'm going to eat this but not that. What it's about is about creating disciplines and allowing. 